Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Humans and Ethanol, written by Wanny91. To us, said the bipedal creature, who was sitting on the opposite side of my table, with a solemnly voice, and raised the glass which it held in one of his two claw-like hands in my direction. Surprised by the sudden gesture of friendliness which came out of nowhere, I needed a moment before I could grab my glass so that I could imitate the strange and to me unknown gesture of the human. As it quickly turned out, my decision to copy the human's gesture had been the right thing, because as soon as I had raised my glass into the air, the human opened his mouth sideways and showed me a set of white and dangerously sharp-looking teeth. And it was only thanks to my universal translator and the fact that I had seen this gesture before that I knew that this menacing-looking gesture was in fact an expression of happiness and not a threat against my person. But still smiling as the spatial expression was called in his language, the human nodded appreciatively for my thoughtfulness with his head in my direction before finally lowering his hand again so he was able to press the opening of the glass firmly to his lips. And without waiting for me to do the same, the human proceeded to gulp the greenish liquid inside of the glass down his throat in one single, continuous move of his head backwards instead of taking one sip at a time. I could only guess at this point that it was the high percentage of ethanol inside his drink which let the human immediately twist his mouth in disgust when the bitter flavor of the ethanol overwhelmed his sense of taste as soon as the liquid had reached his stomach. But before I had the chance to ask him if he was okay, the human suddenly slammed down his empty glass on the table, lowered his head, and let out a loud bah! before starting to shake his head violently from one side to the other, like he wanted to get rid of the bitter taste in his mouth in that kind of way. Interestingly enough, this fierce head shaking actually seemed to aid the human in overcoming the numbing after effects of the ethanol in record time, because not only did the human stop the head shaking a few moments later again, but he also lifted up his head and looked me straight into my eyes like nothing had just happened. And instead of showing regret, the human showed me his predatory smile again before asking, Another one? While pointing with one of his five fingers, he possessed in each hand at the almost empty glass in front of me. Since I was still frozen in astonishment about this vast metabolism, I needed a moment before I could recover and answer him. I, uh, honestly don't know. But instead of accepting my answer, the smile on the human's face only grew wider. Come on, he said, taunting me. We have finally finished our project in which we had worked for over the past year, so let us celebrate this occasion in an appropriate kind of way. When I heard the human saying that, I couldn't resist to ask him in a reproachful tone. Does celebrating mean to poison oneself with ethanol until we black out? I asked him. And before the human could answer my subtle allegations, I took a quick glance at the five empty glasses which stood in front of him, before saying in a more respectful tone, Look, Robert, I admit that I don't know much about your species yet, but I am fairly sure that no living being should drink that amount of ethanol, like you have, unless they plan to kill themselves. And you, my friend, already had a lot, so I don't think any more drinks are good for you. But instead of accepting my concerns, my co-worker, called Robert, waved with his hand horizontally in the air like he wanted to wipe the concerns away with that gesture. Look, Gregor, he said with a completely different tone in his voice than before. Alcohol, or as an old base drinks like you would call them, are essential for us humans if we want to celebrate something. Now, of course, you are right with your assumption that too much ethanol can be dangerous, even for someone of my species. But believe me when I say that most humans know their limit of how much ethanol they can handle before they have to throw up, and I'm still far away from that point. Are you sure? I asked my friend, not fully convinced yet. That was why I inquired. How can you know your tolerance for this kind of poison if too much can kill you? And Robert could only give me his answer, I explained myself. I only ask because I have heard that it isn't allowed for a human to drink ethanol-based drinks if they aren't considered to be an adult by law yet, and this isn't until one of your kind is over 18 cycles old, so there is no time yet to learn your limit without overdosing and thus killing yourself, especially if you are only 24 cycles old, like you have told me. 
Well, Robert started to explain. Technically, you are right when you say that it is forbidden for a human to drink alcohol if they are still underage. But this law honestly never has stopped us from drinking, even though we weren't grown-ups yet. He said, while smiling mischievously. His words stopped me in the middle of moving my glass down from my mouth. Wait a minute, I slowly said, while I put the glass back on the table. Do you honestly want to tell me that your younglings ignore this law and drink this kind of poison, even though it can kill them? Robert nodded with his head. With his head. The flesh around my mouth moved back in shock, and gobsmacked if I asked him, How in the name of Ulstuk can your elders allow you to do something like that? Don't they try to stop you? My question let Robert laugh. <laughs> I can't answer for others, but in my case, it was actually my father who gave me my first drink. He said a few moments later, still chuckling. Your elder did what? I said louder than I wanted to. That was why I lowered my voice when I asked Robert, shocked. How could your elder do that if the slightest bit of ethanol is enough to kill a youngling? Robert stopped smiling, and one of his eyebrows moved up. Why would a sip of alcohol kill a child? He asked me, confused, instead of answering my question. It isn't like our bodies can't handle one sip, he then said. Now I was confused. Do you seriously want to tell me that the bodies of your younglings can handle ethanol? How is this even possible without having the help of an implant? Robert scratched his head. How do I say this? He said more to himself than to me before starting. I know that this may sound strange to you, but we humans have an organ which just job is to clean our blood, and in the process it removes everything poisonous from our body. I was impressed. That really is interesting. I said, and was quiet for a moment, so Robert used the chance to ask a question himself. Based on your comment, I suspect that your species don't have such an organ. Am I right? As an answer, I slowly moved my head in a circular motion, which had the same meaning as the human gesture, where they shook their head to deny something. No, we don't have such an organ, I confirmed Robert's suspicion. And why should we? Back on our home planet, there wasn't anything which was poisonous for us, so we never had to deal with poison. But if you don't mind me asking, how did your species have the idea to create the implant if there wasn't anything on your home planet which was toxic to you? Robert inquired. His question let my ears vibrate in amusement. My race isn't stupid, Robert. I answered him over the humming in my ears. It is only logical that my race sooner or later stumbled over something toxic in the universe. And when we found out how vulnerable our bodies were, we created the implants in order to protect ourselves. So why don't you give your younglings an implant if any toxin can kill them? Robert asked, puzzled. I moved one of my arms over my head. That is quite hard to explain to an outsider, I said evasive. But our younglings grow up on our home planet until they have reached a certain level of self-awareness. And since ethanol is not only highly addictive for us, but also numbs our nervous systems like it does with yours, we believe that it hinders them to reach this level and thus hinder them in reaching adulthood. So until they aren't ready yet, they simply won't get an implant. Sounds harsh, but effective, Robert commented, and moved his hand through his hair around his mouth, which only had grown in the last few months. It sounds harsh, yes, I agreed, but by doing that we make sure that they won't get tempted by something that can kill them. True that, Robert agreed, and since he didn't ask another question, I used the chance to ask him another. So instead of an implant like we have, your species has an organ which protects you from the toxins? Robert nodded. That is more or less right, he confirmed, but the liver is an organ is called is incapable of protecting us against every kind of poison we ingest. When we are born, as for example, our liver is still weak, and the slightest amount of poison can kill us since the liver can't handle it yet. Therefore, the law banning alcohol for underage humans since their liver can't handle the ethanol yet. What do you mean by yet? Do you want to imply that this liver of yours gets stronger over time? I asked, confused. Not over time, no, Robert denied. More like our liver grows stronger, the more poison we ingest. I didn't quite understand that. That was why I asked, care to explain? Robert sighed. Take ethanol as an example. I had my first sip of alcohol when I was 14 years old. At first, I didn't like the taste of beer at all, and I got sick just by drinking one sip. But over the course of the next two years, I was able to drink more and more sips until I could drink two beers without any problem. And what happens if you drink too much? Robert scratched his head. It depends on the amount you take. If you are below a certain level, we only wake up the next day with a nasty headache, since the ethanol takes away the water in our body 
which leaves us with a so-called hangover. But if we drink more than that, we will throw up since our body wants to get rid of the excessive alcohol in our body. Only if we then choose to drink more alcohol, it can get dangerous for us if we don't get treated at a hospital. So ethanol is only dangerous for you if you choose to ignore all the warnings and don't get treated at a hospital. I repeated his last words as a question. Robert nodded slowly, but then suddenly clapped his hands together. But enough of what happens if we have too much, he said enthusiastically, and pointed again at the empty glass in front of him. So do you take another round or not? Surprised by his sudden change of topic, I looked down at the empty glass in my hand before I asked myself the very same question. And more important, if my implant could handle another round. Fine, I said a few moments later, reluctantly, and sighed heavily. Let us order another round, I added, even though I cursed myself on the inside, ready for agreeing. I knew that the consequences of another round would be a terrible headache the next morning, since the implant used this pain to show me how much more toxin it could handle, and the more I would have in my body, the worse the headache would get. When I looked up from the glass again, it didn't surprise me to see Robert smiling again. That is good to hear, my friend, he said, obviously happy, before begging me, but please let us order some drink from my planet this time. Why? I asked him curiously. Robert sighed. Because then you will be able to drink a real drink for once, and not something weak like the previous beverage we had. I couldn't help myself for feeling a bit offended by his words. What do you mean by a weak drink? I asked him provokingly. That green liquid had so much ethanol inside it that your body instantly reacted to it, so you can't tell me that it was too weak. Are you referring to my head shaking in tears? Robert asked, surprised only to add innocently. That wasn't because of the amount of ethanol in the drink. I leaned forward in my stool. You seriously want to tell me that that violent head shaking, the tensing of your muscles, and the transplant fluid in your eyes after you had swallowed down the drink in one gulp wasn't because there was too much ethanol inside of it? I asked, obviously not believing him. But Robert nodded his head. That is correct, yes, he said. And that head shaking was to get rid of the weird aftertaste since uh, the liquid tasted like foul meat. But beside that, I, I barely could taste the ethanol inside of the drink. That is why I poured my glass so full and swallowed it in one motion. Really? I asked, still not believing him. But since I knew that it was pointless to argue with Robert about that topic, I gave in. Fine. If you are so convinced, then let us order some beverage from your planet. But please order something which doesn't have too much ethanol in it, okay? I don't want to end up totally wasted. Robert smiled and nodded, eagerly, before turning around on his stool so that he could search for the drink maker of this place. I, in the meantime, used this chance to sort out my thoughts, because even though Robert's species had joined the Galactic Republic quite a while ago, I hadn't had the time yet to learn more about his species. So the fact that Robert supposedly hadn't felt any ethanol in our previous drink somehow worried me a bit, since the green liquid was supposed to be one of the strongest drinks in this bar. But if Robert was telling the truth about this organ called the liver, it would certainly explain some of the rumors and warnings I'd heard about the humans. And it would also explain how Roberts was able to drink so much ethanol without showing any side effects. But while I was still lost in my thoughts, I suddenly could hear Robert asking someone, Do you have any kind of beverage from the Terrans? Referring to the official name of his species. Confused to whom Robert was talking to, I lifted my head only to see him facing a tall, greyish-looking alien who had quietly arrived on our table without me noticing. I think we have some beverages from the human race. I could hear the drink maker of the bar saying to Robert in his high voice, but you would have to pour your drinks yourselves since we don't know how much human ethanol is enough to make this strong drink. Robert smiled. That isn't a problem at all. He said happy and failed to notice that the drink maker made a step backwards as soon as he saw the predatory smile of Robert. But not a second later, it seemed like the universal translator kicked in and told the drink maker that the smile of Robert was a gesture of friendliness and not a threat against him, what it would have usually meant if it had come from any other omni or carnivorous species. That was why the greyish alien relaxed again as soon as he had heard the translation of his translator. Curiously, I looked from the drink maker to Robert, who didn't seem to have noticed that the drink maker had made a step backwards because he didn't show any sign of concern. Instead, Robert asked the drink maker, Before you go, can I also ask you if you have Coca-Cola in this bar? 
Unlike me, it seemed like the drink maker had heard the word Coca-Cola before, because he asked Robert to clarify, Isn't Coca-Cola that dark, sweet liquid from your race with a lot of sugar in it? Yep, that's it, Robert confirmed with his predatory smile before asking, So that means you have some? The drink maker nodded slowly and said, I would have to look in our basement, but I think we still have some bottles left. If we have some, I will bring you one bottle. That would be very kind of you, Robert said, and then turned in my direction again since the conversation with the drink maker was clearly finished. Cola, I simply asked Robert after we faced each other again. It is a soft drink from my planet. When I was younger, we often used it to mix it with other alcohol, so our drinks would taste better. Robert answered my question. And what is inside of this soft drink? I wanted to know. But instead of telling me, Robert raised his hand facing upwards to his shoulder, which, according to my translator, was a gesture to show that he didn't know something. I honestly don't know, Robert added to his gesture a second later. But since our two races apparently have similar taste, I think you'll like it. We will see, I simply said, since I wasn't that sure about it, and we both fell into silence. Luckily for us, we didn't have long to wait until the drink maker returned to our table with a total of six different bottles in each of his hands. I wasn't sure which Terran alcohol you would like. That is why I brought you every bottle we have from Earth, he said, while placing one bottle after another in front of Robert, until one bottle was left. And here is your requested Coca-Cola, the drink maker said, while placing the last bottle on the table. And, by the way, the drink maker continued, I have checked the label on this bottle, and my boss told me to tell you that if you don't finish the bottle here... Can you take it home, since most of our clients probably won't drink something like that, which is so highly addictive? The drink maker's last words gave me a worried look, while Robert looked happy. Thank you very much for that, he thanked the drink maker, before turning his attention to the bottles. Slowly, he took each bottle into his hands and inspected the label before he took the bottle cap and looked inside of the bottle. This procedure repeated itself for every bottle, until Robert had inspected every single bottle, except one with a Coca-Cola inside. We'll take this one, Robert said, after he had put the last bottle on the table again, only to take another bottle in his hands so that he could show it to the drink maker. Very well, the drink maker said, and made a little bow. Then I will take the other ones back. With his word, the drinker took the other four bottles in his hands again, before walking back behind the bar counter so that he was able to store the bottles behind the locked cabinet again. With a slightly worried look on my face, I turned my attention from the locked cabinet back to Robert, who in the meantime was busy opening a bottle, which looked like it was made out of molten sand. After he had opened the bottle, Robert carefully filled the two fresh glasses, which the drink maker had also brought, to about half full before closing the bottle again. And while Robert reached out for the red-colored bottle made from plastic, I stretched one of my arms so that I was able to grab the clear glass bottle with one of my suckers on my hand. What does Jack Daniels and Tennessee whiskey mean? I asked Robert as soon as I had finished reading the black label on the bottle. Robert looked up from pouring the drinks and followed my gaze to the bottle. Ah, you mean the bottle, he said, smiling. Well, Jack Daniels is the name of the alcohol, and Tennessee whiskey describes what type it is. You have different ethanol-based drinks. I asked Robert, surprised. Yeah, yes, we have, Robert answered, while finishing the second glass by pouring Coca-Cola in it. We have, as an example, beer, which is made from the fermentation of starches. Then we have wine, which is made from the fermentation of grapes and other fruits. And then we have harder liquor, which is made by distilling different mixtures of alcoholic fermentation. And how many different ethanol-based drinks are there? I almost didn't dare to ask. Robert moved his shoulder up again without looking up. I don't know. Thousands, maybe? Thousands? I said in disbelief. Or more, Robert added and finished the second drink. And what does this symbol on these numbers mean? I asked while Robert was closing the Coca-Cola bottle, which wasn't even half empty yet. You mean the percentage symbol? Robert asked to clarify while handing me one of the two glasses. I'm surprised that your translator hasn't translated it, but the symbol shows the percentage of ethanol inside the bottle. Here, it says the bottle contains 40% alcohol. Wait, what? I asked hardly. Did you just say 40%? Robert nodded. Why? Is that a problem? He asked me, concerned. I shook my head. Not for me, no. 
but a percentage of a 20% in a liquid is enough to kill almost everyone else. Did you know that? Robert's eyes grew wide, which indirectly told me his answer. No, I didn't know that, he answered, obviously surprised. But can you drink it? I nodded. Barely, yes, and only because my species has the implant. But if the percentage would be over 50%, it would be deadly for me too. Luckily for me, you didn't mix this drink with some kind of psychoactive drug. Otherwise, I would die in the spot. As soon as I ended my sentence, Robert looked several seconds with wide eyes at me before he leapt so fast over the table that my eyes couldn't follow him. Before I could even react, Robert already had smacked the drink which had mixed out of my hand. What the feck, Robert? I yelled surprised at Robert and stood up. But the only thing Robert did was sit calmly down and he stood again. So I asked him with a quieter voice, Why did you do that? Robert took a sip from his drink before saying in a calm voice, uh, believe me, you'll thank me in a minute. I folded my tentacles around my body to show him that I wasn't happy with him. And why should I? I asked him challengingly. Robert took another sip. Well, he started. Maybe because that Coca-Cola is from my planet contains caffeine. I stared in disbelief at Robert. What? I asked to clarify, even though I'd heard him correctly. You seriously want to tell me that you mix your ethanol-based drinks with some other psychoactive drug? Is your species crazy? To my surprise, Robert smiled. If you think that's crazy, he said, then you should see what we do back on Earth. There we have alcohol, well over 80% alcohol, and we sometimes mix it with liquids, who have as much caffeine inside of them as Coca-Cola. Seriously, Robert? I was finally able to say, after staring at Robert in disbelief for several minutes. You humans have a serious addiction problem. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian.